Hello. In this video, I want to discuss how to work with the user session from Flask when also using my Flask Socket IO extension. Uh, for some reason, this is something that's uh, that's kind of difficult. A lot of people don't understand how it works and what are the uh, the gotchas in this uh, process. Uh, there's also uh, a new feature that I am releasing now that improved the situation. So I am, I'm also going to show you that. So let's take a look at this example that I built. This is uh, this is called sessions.py. It is in the Flask Socket IO repository in the uh, example folder. So this is an example that uh, allows you to uh, work with the sessions and also with Flask login, which are the two uh, usages of uh, user sessions that people find uh, find difficulty with. So. This is a, a simple example. Right now, uh, it, it's uh, it's creating the socket I/O as a default. So th this is what uh, what you're using right now. Uh, the the session management is uh, is done by default. And I'm going to start this example. And we are going to take a look at how things are. So let's open this. So this application basically allows you to uh, to see what the user session looks like and also what the the current user from Flask login is, uh, both on the HTTP side and in the socket I/O side. So, for example, if if I right right now the current session has nothing, so I can, for example, I can set a value, and now it's going to show me what what the value is. And this this is coming from an asynchronous request. That's, uh, that's happening in the background. The, the browser is constantly refreshing the contents of the session. Uh, likewise, I can here say uh, Bob, for example, I'm going to log Bob in. And now the user Bob is logged in. Uh, of course, this is not asking for a password. Since this is an example, I'm, I'm not verifying passwords. I'm, I'm accepting any username that, uh, that the client sends. Of course, this is not going to be the case for a real application. But uh, anyway, so now, now we have uh, Bob logged in, and then we have Apples in the user session. So so far, we are not connected to Socket IO. So I'm going to go ahead and connect, and you can see that both the session and the current user are inherited from the HTTP session. Uh, but there's there's a catch here. It's not the same session. If, if now I go uh, and make a change, so let's say I'm going to change the session from a socket IO event, and I'm going to set it to bananas, say. So see that the current session changed, but if you, if you look up here at the HTTP side, it did not change. So basically, there's a fork at the time you connect. The contents of the HTTP session are copied to the socket IO session, but, but, but it's branched. Basically, they, they're, they're separate. Uh, you, you can see that Bob, which was logged in on HTTP, is also accessible from socket IO events. But if I, let's say, I, I'm, I'm going to log Bob out from here. So, so now here we are in anonymous on the socket IO session, but from the HTTP side, Bob continues to be logged in. So basically, this session, it's completely uh, separate. It's just a copy of the HTTP session at the time of the uh, socket IO connection. So I, I hope this is clear. Th this is what a lot of people have trouble understanding. And uh, of course, I understand that this is not ideal. And if, if you want to know what the problem is, is, is the, the problem is that socket IO is connected over WebSocket. And when you change the session over WebSocket, there is actually no vehicle to send the, the, the session cookie back to the client. Uh, there, there's just actually no mechanism, no standard mechanism to send a cookie through WebSocket. And that's the reason why the user session on the socket IO is a copy and it's private to the socket IO session, which stays in the server, doesn't need to go to the client in a cookie. So, so far, this, this is what you have right now. If, if you use the extension, this, this is the behavior that you get. So now uh, let's talk about the new feature. So I've added an option. So, so when you create your 
uh, socket IO application, you can you can ask the extension to not manage your session. The default for managed session is true, and I, I call it managed session because Flask socket IO is actually creating its own session. So when, when you set managed session to false, then uh, socket IO will rely on Flask to manage the session. Now, this makes sense when you are working with server-side sessions. So for, for this example, uh, you can see that I am using session. Uh, th this is the, the Flask session extension, which basically creates uh, sessions in the server and only sends the session ID to the, uh, to the client in the cookie. So when, when the sessions are in the server, there's really not a problem with updating the session from socket IO because it, it's all server-side. So with managed session set to false, uh, this already uh, restarted? No, I need to save. Okay, so it's restarted now. So, so now we have uh, managed session set to false. I'm going to refresh so that we start clean. Well, actually not clean because the session is still there. Uh, so anyway, we, we have apples and we still have Bob logged in. So I connect and like before, we still we have these two settings. Now, if I set this one to bananas, this is going to change the server-side session. And because the server-side session doesn't require a cookie, or at least doesn't require the contents to be in a cookie, then uh, it's also visible to HTTP. So it, it updated both. If I log out Bob, now it's going to be logged out from both, which is actually what most people want. They, they want the, you know, a shared session between the two, uh, the, between the HTTP and the WebSocket uh, routes. Uh, I, I can do even more crazy things. I, I can log someone in from, uh, from WebSocket. So I can say, uh, Alice, log her in, and it's, it's going to be logged in. She's, she's going to be logged in also from HTTP. So th these are sessions that are, there's actually only one session that's fully in sync between the two. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to mention it once again you need to use a server-side session for this. It's not going to work with the default sessions from Flask. Okay, so the the third mode in which uh, we can, uh, I, I can show you, and this is a mode that you will probably not want to use, but I'm going to show you for, uh, just so that everything is covered, is when you work with the Flask sessions, so I'm, I'm going to comment out Flask session. So we're going to go back to cookies. And uh, we, we, we have the, the managed session set to false, like before. So we are still letting Flask handle the sessions, but now we don't have server-side sessions. So let's see what happens uh, when, when, we, when we do it this way. So the server now uh, restarted. I'm going to refresh. So now uh, we, we lost the contents of the session because now we're using the cookie-based session. So this is this is a brand new session. So I'm going to set the apples again here. I'm going to log Bob in again. There we go. And connect. And it's the same thing happens, right? So far, you know, the, the three modes of uh, sessions are the same. Uh, in all cases, when you connect the session from HTTP goes into the socket IO session. But uh, see what happens now. I'm going to set uh, bananas here. I'm going to submit. And nothing happens. And that's the problem when using client-side sessions, the default sessions from Flask based on cookies, and uh, letting Flask handle the session. Flask is going to try to send the cookie back to the client. And there's no way to do that when, when you are connected over WebSocket. So, Basically, any changes you make in a, in a socket IO event, they're going to be lost. The same here. If I say uh, log out, there's no way to, to make any changes to the session. Basically, the session is read-only. So in a case where uh, you're fine having a read-only session that's only going to be modified from the HTTP side, then this might be okay. I don't expect anybody finding a, a real usage for this option, but since it's there, and it's probably going to give you a result that you don't expect. I better show you how it works so that you are uh, prepared to handle this. So anyway, 
I hope uh, this was useful. Uh, this, uh, this video comes with a, a companion article that explains all this uh, through text if you prefer to view it uh, in text form. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions, uh, if there are any doubts, any problems, and uh, happy Socrayo. Bye-bye.